imagine you're in a large concert hall. You're sitting in your comfy chair and you can feel the suspense and energy in the room. It's really quiet. The conductor lifts his hands and more than 100 musicians begin to play this wonderful symphony. Suddenly, the lights go off. Guess what will happen? Well, I assume the music will stop. Maybe some musicians try playing without any eye contact to the conductor, but more than likely there won't be any symphony until the environment is perfect and clean and without changes anymore. Now, let's switch the scenery. Let's enter a club, a jazz club. I'm sure you can smell the sticky, warm, stale air. And five or six musicians are on stage and they play some tune. It sounds familiar, but ah, you can't remember the title. And suddenly, the lights go off. Guess what will happen? Well, I assume the musicians will just keep on playing. They are used to react spontaneously on what is going on and keep on grooving no matter what. They are used to improvise. I've been playing the saxophone for nearly 20 years now, and improvisation, like in the jazz club, is what fascinates me. People who might never play together agree on some tunes, and they are on stage. And nevertheless, or possibly due to this fact, they are able to create a special space in which they let a little idea develop to something awesome something new, creative, deep, impressive, and lasting. And the setting where all this can happen is called the jazz session. Well, I'm a psychologist and I'm working as a personal business coach. Coaching means to partner with men and women in a one-on-one -on -one thought-provoking process. And my task as a coach is it to create this special space in which the client gets empowered to develop something awesome, something new, creative, deep, impressive, and lasting. And guess what? The setting where all this can happen is called the coaching session. What I notice is both a good jazz session and a good coaching session do not happen by chance. And for the past few years, I spent time exploring what this is all about, and today, I would like to reveal what I found out. I'd like to suggest four different perspectives which support personal development in a jazzy way. And this jazzy mindset might as well help you to create this special space for developing something awesome, something, well, you know what I mean, don't you? <laughs> okay, so it's time for your session. I'd like to invite you to think about a situation in your personal or business life in which you would like to create space for development. And I'm going to show you the four different perspectives of this jazzy approach. And at the end of this talk, we come back to your situation and I give you some thought-provoking questions which might help you bring those perspectives to life. So, let's get started. Have you ever heard of John Coltrane? <laughs> When I was a teenager, my saxophone teacher gave me a disc with an album of Coltrane. He's an awesome jazz musician, he said. But for me, it uh, didn't sound exactly awesome. It just was so exhausting listening to him. It was, um, for me, there was no structure, just an unorganized sequence of sounds. It was chaotic and stressful. Over the years, my perspective changed, however, as I got to know jazz as a style of music. But nevertheless, one thing stayed all along. Whenever listening to such jazz musician, after a short while, you 
recognize their personal style, perhaps even their personality. Why is that? They took off a great deal of time to practice, of course, but more importantly, this gave them the opportunity to explore their inner existence and their own idea of sound and musical expression. Needless to say, as a coach, it is essential to know myself too. I need to be aware of my own feelings, my attitudes, the recurring issues in my life and to work that through. And the way to achieve this is through inner reflection, supervision and creative breaks like jazz musicians do. And in both cases, it's not about getting perfect. It's about becoming yourself because it's never the coaching method that matters. It's never how clean and skillful you play. It's about being truly you and having an upright personality. So, the first perspective of this jazzy approach is about your inner world. Explore your inner existence, your values, your personal vision, so you can be full of integrity in your situation. Now, let's continue with the second perspective. A few years ago, I was part of a band and we had that special gig. We were all looking forward to this night because we had a special guest playing the vibraphone, David Friedman has name. And it was my honor to get featured with him for a solo part, such as you would expect it on a jazz session. But we had only one single opportunity to rehearse together the night before. So we gave our solo part a chance to check the whole thing out. And after the first round, I was looking forward to another chance. But Friedman said, mm, ah, we leave it like that, so we stay fresh for tomorrow's gig, will we? And I said, yes. Well, in jazz, a tune is defined by just two things, the melody and the harmonies, the sounds, that's it. No further sheet music or other memorized things. So for a jazz musician to improvise means to say yes. Yes to the uncertainty, yes to what the others do and play. Yes to a complex and unpredictable situation. Okay, well, let's assume you are going to take the risk like I did. So how do you know what to play? The key is to know your set of tools, your personal repertoire. This might include some scales, rhythms, your very own idea of sound. And you've trained for all this a lot. You're an expert on that and you have what it takes. And then you forget all this stuff. You trust your intuition and put them together in a new, not prepared, not even conscious manner. And for that to happen, you're fully aware and present. You sense what is and accept what is. So in the past I thought, okay, music. Music is a creative thing. You have to listen to your heart and follow your intuition. But in coaching, seriously, as a coach, you're rooted in psychological theory and science and data and tools. But I was wrong. Well, partly wrong and partly right. So I was right because as a coach, I have my personal repertoire. My concepts about emotions, cognitions, physiological functions. My theories about stress or leadership, specific interventions or methods to achieve goals. And then I go the jazzy way and forget all this stuff. Sometimes I find myself in a coaching session and I somehow get the impulse to behave in a certain way, which I can't explain rationally firsthand. I follow my intuition. And for that to happen, I have to be fully present. In advance of any of my coaching sessions, I clear my mind and let go of any thought which could possibly distract me. So the person with me will become the most important human being on earth for that moment. So now you know the second perspective of the jazzy approach. It is how you behave in the outer world. You improvise, follow your intuition and are fully aware. Okay, so maybe you're sitting there. I can't improvise. I won't. In particular in my situation, well, perhaps you're right. 
but it's possible for you to try. It's not a discipline which you learn at home and when you're done, you go on stage and everything's gonna be perfect. If you want to learn to improvise, there's just one thing you can do. Go on and improvise and you will make mistakes. But a mistake is not a mistake. A mistake is an impulse, an information, an idea which leads to something new. And therefore, you need to co-design a culture and your relationships in a way that it's possible for you to make mistakes. So let's go in for the third perspective. I remember the first time when I was part of the band who kicked off the session. Right after the sound check, the drummer approached me and said, Christine, listen, this is your first time as a main act, so you'll be thrown in at the deep end. Little did I know about what was to happen that night. Right in the middle of the tune, the band just stopped playing. <laughs> so me on stage and suddenly there was just silence. Quick enough, I stayed in the rhythm and went on until they started to play with me again. But I can tell you, this was really scary. And it also helped me unlock my potential. I was challenged and provoked in a good sense, while at the same time we were responsive to one another. And for that, of course, listening is key. And speaking of listening, you might wonder why I didn't mention the audience so far. People in the audience usually don't mind whether you've shown exceptional talent or you're a beginner. What matters is that you are able to open your heart, express your feelings and just play. Personal integrity, remember? So, besides the groove of the music itself, this leads to what I call an inner common groove, an energizing, unique relationship. And the same goes for coaching. According to a number of scientific studies, the relationship between the coach and his or her client is one of the key success factors for coaching. The client will feel that I do not judge him or his behavior. So I told you about the audience in jazz. What about the audience in coaching? One-on-one -on -one coaching, of course. It's one-on-one, -on -one, so no audience. No listeners, at least. However, there is an audience in coaching, too. Family members, colleagues, managers, team members, they're always part of the session. Not in person, obviously. But at times, I will ask the client to take the role of, let's say, the team members, and imagine what they would do and feel. And that way, the client can resolve an issue with them, because every change in the world of the client begins within the client. So, now you know the third perspective of this jazzy approach. It is how you are related to others through appreciation, getting in resonance with each other, and going with your common inner groove. Now, let's move on to the fourth and last perspective. Many years ago, one of the greatest bass players, Dave Holland, came to play at the Jazz Festival in Göttingen, my hometown. Soon after the concert, he disappeared from the scene. I heard he was just tired and went to bed early. Anyway, his band members were up for some fun and started an unplanned jazz session. It may sound crazy, and it probably was. I was eager to see what would happen and decided to join in. It just illustrates how a jazz session works. So let me tell you what happened that night. First of all, we agreed on a tune. And a jazz tune follows a defined process. First the melody, then some solo parts, and finally the melody again. And within this process, everyone was free to play what came to mind, and so did I. I played what I felt would fit in the whole sound experience. And you see there, those two sides. A clear structure on the one hand and freedom on the other hand. It's kind of swinging between stabilizing and changing. And this polarity kind of thing is typical for a jazz session. So what do you see when attending a coaching session? You can see two people having a good conversation. <laughs> Likewise, watching a jazz session for the first time, you could possibly think there's no structure in order at all. That's right, there is no script. But the secret is a jazzy one. There is a proven process which gives us structure. You begin the session with a little check-in, reflection of the results, and so on. 
And the more familiar you're with this standard process, the better you can, guess what? Improvise. And the whole setting is dominated by those polarities and the tension which results from that. So the fourth and last perspective is about your whole setting, and this includes the process and the polarities within the system. Now, think back to the situation in which you would like to create space for development. Jazz might help you with that. Neither do you need to become a jazz musician, nor do you need to go to your local jazz club. Well, you might want to join a jazz session anyway, because it's good fun. However, what I want you to do is to embrace a more jazzy mindset using all four perspectives to look at your situation. And the following questions might pave the way. Ask yourself, how can I make sure to have enough space for reflecting on my inner world to become fully aware of my inner existence to get to be authentic in my situation? Ask yourself, in my situation, what is my personal repertoire, my tools, and how can I use the art of improvisation and intuition? Ask yourself, how can I create a culture in which relationships are meaningful and mistakes are not only tolerated but desired? And how can I create these meaningful relationships to the people involved, to my audience, so that we are in resonance with each other and going with our common inner groove? Ask yourself, how can I design the whole process, structures in the system in which both sides of the story are represented? Find your answers and forget them. And the next time the lights go off, shift your perspective, bringing all four perspectives together will facilitate development in your life. Now, jazz up your life and go the jazzy way. Thank you.